Hi, I'm Gary Gibbons, here to share with you the new Spectral Oscillator features in Patch Hop 2. The Spectral Oscillator is based on a completely new developed algorithm for high-end time stretching and pitch scaling. That means you can get even more creative with samples. All right, let's get right to it. I have the Patch Hop default preset loaded. Now, the cool thing with having the Spectral Oscillator is that it allows us to create static sounds that can also play the original sample. Okay, let's switch to the Spectral Oscillator by clicking this icon. As you can see, green signifies the Spectral Oscillator. To show you what an acoustic sample sounds like in the Spectral Oscillator, I'm going to go to the Select Sample button and load the Grand Piano Sample. As you can see, when the sample is loading, the spectral oscillator analyzed the spectrum to generate a waveform for playback. So we are all set. Here is what the original sample sounds like. Okay, in the playback setting region is the loop. You can choose between off, on, and alt. When the loop setting is off, the playback stops at the end of the sample like this. And if the loop setting is on, when the loop end is reached, the playback marker jumps back to the start of the loop. And the third option, when the loop is set to ALT, the loop is playback alternating forwards and backwards. That means when the loop end start is reached, the playback order is reversed. Cool. Now I'm going to turn the loop setting to off and show you playback speed. This allows you to play a sample at any speed or direction. For example, if we change the value to 0%, the playback is static. At 100%, the sample will be played at its original speed. And at 200%, it plays twice as fast as the original sample. Let's set it to 100%. Next, I'm going to show you the playback speed key follow here named key F. So if we have the speed set to 100%, it plays at the original speed of the sample, right? Okay, when key F is set to zero, the sample plays the same speed, or let's say tempo, on all keys on the keyboard. But if we change these key F settings, the way it is played back on the keyboard is different. If the value is increased, the higher octaves play at a faster speed, and the lower octaves play at a slower speed, just like this. If the values are switched to a negative amount, it will be reversed. The higher octaves will play at a slower speed, and the low octaves will play at a faster speed, like this. Now I want to show you the random direction parameter. First, I'm going to move the position of the playback to the middle of the sample by hovering over top of the waveform and clicking the mouse like this. You see how the direction is moving to the right each time that I click, like this? Okay, so. Now that I have the position set to the middle of the sample, explaining the random direction is pretty straightforward. This parameter allows us to randomize speed and direction of the playback. I'm going to change the value to 100% for this example. 
Okay, let's have a listen. All right, that's how that works. Now I'm going to show you the format and format key follow parameters here and here. First, for the format parameter, it allows you to shift the formats of the spectrum. Let's change the values around and have a listen. For the format key follow parameters, it enables us to change how the format is played on the keyboard. Now I'm going to show you the two most important new parameters in the spectral oscillator, purity and inharmonicity. You can create really crazy sounds just with these two, but there are some important things to know about it when working with it. First, we are diving into purity. Purity works with the special purity of the sound and affects the brightness of the sound. So at 0%, you can hear the original sound. At a larger positive value like 100%, it results in a pure sound. And with a negative value, it results in a noisy, more impure sound. Cool, nice, and dirty. Next, I'm going to show you inharmonicity that changes the timbre of a sample from clean to dissonant. This parameter scales the frequency offsets of all partials. Whether this parameter has an effect depends largely on whether those frequency offsets already exist in the signal. So the frequencies of the partials are compared to the harmonic series starting two octaves below the played pitch. The interesting thing about this is a strictly harmonic or non-harmonic sample has different results which means the results are depending on the sample material you are using. If it is a really harmonic sound, there won't be any effect on the inharmonicity. But if you have very inharmonic samples, you can get very, very drastic sounds. What might also be good to know, if you use a sample with inharmonicity at 0%, the spectral oscillator behaves pretty much like a classic wavetable oscillator. Okay, with that said, let's listen to what the grand piano sounds like at 0%. And now at 100%, you can hear the original sound. At 200%, the frequencies get twice the frequency offset. And now at negative values like minus 200%, they invert the same way. Okay, I just loaded the sample name Colossal for the next example, and the loop is turned to Alt. Okay, now let's play and hold a note while changing the amount of inharmonicity. Now I'm going to play a sequence with automation using the purity and inharmonicity parameters. All 
awesome. As you can hear, it is very easy to create a bigger impact with these two parameters rather than with a usual filter. All right, I'm gonna load an acoustic sample quickly. I have imported the log drum sample, and now I'm gonna show you the low cut. This parameter allows you to adjust the dampening of low frequencies. The higher the amount, the more of the low frequencies are cut, hence the name low cut. Now this doesn't work like a classic filter with a fixed cutoff frequency. Instead, it takes into account the current frequencies in the sample. So when wanting to change the low rumble, low cut is best with samples of acoustic instruments. Another possibility is to use the low cut in the spectral oscillator as a kind of creative sound design tool when using synthetic samples. So for example here, if I set the parameter to 10%, those low frequencies that occupy 10% of the overall energy in the spectrum are removed. Okay, have a listen. As you can hear, this can be very useful to remove low rumble sounds that might get audible towards the higher notes. Okay, I changed the sample for the next example. Next, I wanna show you the number of voices parameter. This determines the number of play markers that play back together. We can also set fractions of numbers as well. For example, with a setting of 2.5, you can hear two audio streams at full level and a third one at half level. One thing worth mentioning is that the increase of the number of voices really shines when you combine it with the parameters, position spread, pan, or detune. What's nice to do at the position spread, we can spread the number of voices value that we just changed because this is a function that spreads the playback markers. I'm gonna show you what it sounds like when I change this setting. Yeah, very cool. Okay, I changed the sample. All right, next. I'm gonna show you detune and pan. These parameters are straightforward as well. Detune simply detunes the playback markers, like this. And pan spread makes a stereo panorama to widen the sound. Okay, I hope you got a nice overview on the brand new spectral oscillator and its parameters. I really recommend to check it out by yourself. You will see that it is a really, really powerful new sound design tool. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next tutorial video. Cheers.